So in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of, of CCl4. And uh, this is actually carbon tetrachloride. And we're going to ask ourselves, is this molecule polar or nonpolar? Well, first thing I like to do is draw my Lewis structure. So I know I have a carbon and I have uh, four chlorine atoms. All right, so I'm going to calculate the total number of valence electrons that I have to place. So another, on the periodic table, carbon has four valence electrons. And we know that chlorine is a halogen, so it has about seven valence electrons. So we know uh, that four times seven, that would be 28, uh, plus the four electrons that we have. So we have a total of 32 electrons that we have uh, to place. Now, only we, more, we must multiply the four times the seven because each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons and we have four chlorine atoms, right? So usually our central atom will be the atom furthest to the left in molecular formula. In the molecular formula, not always is the case, but most of the times it is, right? So we know we have a carbon that is surrounded essentially by three uh, chlorine atoms, right? So I usually start off with my single bonds. We know that at this point, carbon is one of those atoms that must satisfy the octet rule, right? So at this point in your chemistry careers, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, like those kind of atoms are atoms that usually uh, satisfy the octet rule. So you have to keep that in mind, right? So I could form a single bond, which is consists of two electrons between that carbon and the chlorine. I also will do the same for this one. And I also could do the same for this one and also this one. Now, uh, one of the key one just a, a lower structure tip here is that usually anytime you have a halogen like say for example you have b connected to x where x represents a halogen it's always going to it's most most of the times it's going to be in the form of this where you have a single bond um from a central atom connected to a halogen mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's kind of a lower structure tip so, so at this point looking at our lower structure we could see that uh, we have two, four, six, eight electrons total, so the carbon's octet is satisfied, so we have no other place to put the electrons other than the chlorine, right? So we could put three pairs of lone pairs on the chlorine to satisfy the chlorine's octet because it is one of the molecules as well that we must kind of really have an octet for, right? And we also could do the same for this chlorine, for the bottom chlorine. And we also could do the same for this chlorine. Right? So if we count out the total number of electrons that we've placed, we have two, four, two, four, six, eight. Uh, and essentially, a quick way of doing the math is we have two, four, six, eight. Uh, so we have four times eight electrons, and that is simply two times sixteen, which is thirty-two electrons. So we know that this is a plausible structure for carbon tetrafluoride. Now, how do we determine if the molecule is actually polar or nonpolar? Well, again, we got draw or dipole moments. Now, keep in mind that this molecule is symmetrical. In other words, if I draw a plane of symmetry, in other words, if I draw a plane of symmetry through the molecule, I get two things that are equal on both sides. So I have a chlorine on the right and I have a chlorine on the left, right? So that's what we essentially mean by the molecule is uh, symmetrical. Now, if we draw our dipole moments, uh, again, we know that chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, uh, so the arrow should be pointing in the, in the direction of the chlorine. I could also do the same for this one, and I also could do the same for this one. And that means the positive sign just means that the carbon is most likely, it's less electronegative, so it's going to lose uh, kind of essentially more electrons. So the, the electron density is going to be um pretty much towards the chlorine atom and we also could do the same uh for uh this one all right so these are the dipole moments now remember the symmetry that i spoke about earlier because the molecule is symmetrical the dipole moments end up canceling out and so this molecule is actually non-polar another way of looking at this molecule in terms of purely the dipole moments um is you should be familiar by now that um, if we have dipoles tail to tail, uh, this would be a net zero dipole moment. Mm -hmm. Now, anytime you have a dipole, uh, for example, and this is just an example, if we have a dipole with something looking like this, 
then the net dipole moment between the addition of these two dipole moments, the net addition will be in this direction. Likewise, if I had flipped the, ar the arrows upside it down, if I went something like this, the net dipole moment would be in this direction. So the middle piece would be the net dipole, always in the middle. And the reason why I say this is because this is applicable here. These two are what exactly what I drew down here. And so the net dipole moment is actually within this direction. And we also have a dipole moment, this one, at the top. So if you really, if we put these tail to tail, you can see that these are tail to tail and eventually the net dipole moment cancels out. So this is equal to zero. All right. So that's another way of looking at the lowest structure. But the main thing I want you to take away from this uh, video is that because the molecules are symmetrical, the net dipole moment cancels out. And this is why uh, CCL4 uh, carbon tetrachloride is nonpolar.